Hey, what's up everybody? YouTube. What are you reading? I'm reading one of my favorite authors, Charles Dickens, revisiting this. Uh, great story, a lot of pipe smoking in it. Nasal snuff usage and cigar smoking. Talk about the characters with their clay pipes or cigars and their nasal snuff. I like it. I like I like uh, literature. So, uh, what I tell you a story? Oh yeah, it's Memorial Day weekend, right? Uh, to all those who work Memorial Day, like myself, I appreciate it. Good for you. And uh, let us remember. Let us remember. Uh, all who served this nation that is no, who are no longer with us now. Many get Memorial Day and Veterans Day confused. Veterans Day is for the living veterans. Memorial Day is for veterans who are deceased. And uh, my father, my late father served in the American Army in the Korean War, and my uncle did, and uh, many other friends who served in Vietnam that I work with at US Air, two are past now, so uh, I'm gonna be remembering them. So this story has nothing to do with Memorial Day. This story deals with Christmas in 1972, of all things. I was 10 years old. It was a week before Christmas. My sister and I were watching a Christmas special on uh, TV. And I believe it was called The Littlest Angel. About a little boy that died and went to heaven. It was a special made-for-TV Christmas special. Happy ending, all that. We have our little snacks because it's Christmas week. Christmas is like four or five days away. Sister and I are eating our little snack. My mother's in the bedroom doing something. My father is working 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. Second shift in the Jones and Lachlan steel mill in Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. So, get a knock on the door. It's about eight o'clock, 8.30. I go to answer the door. There's a woman standing at the front door in rage, in rage, in her nightgown, curlers on her head, cold cream on her face. Hollywood writer could not make this up. Pointing a handgun at me. Mom! I'm 10 years old. Some lady's at the door with a gun. The woman is screaming explicitives. Swearing. Swearing. And more swearing. <laughs> Yelling and screaming and swearing. I picked up a few of the curse words, but you really couldn't understand her. Something about your dog, swear words. So here comes my mom from the bedroom. She sees the woman aiming the gun at me. My mother screams. My mother runs down the four little steps to the entranceway of the split entry. Throws me backwards. My mother did this. Throws me backwards on the steps stands in front of me my mother's like what is your problem something to that effect the woman claimed that our dog ran up to her yard and pooped in her yard and she wasn't having this no more and she was going to shoot us all now mind you this is a 72 so she storms away turns around after my mother screamed and what have you, and my mother's shaking, we're all shook up, and 
you can imagine this scene, right? The woman leaves. She walks back up three houses, right up the street, right behind me, right? My mother calls the center township police. Dun, 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 dun. No 911 then. You had to dial the number. You know, 775, 7689. No, I made that up. But 775 was one of our exchanges. Anyway, calls the police. So about 25 minutes later, and I kid you not, it was about 25 minutes later, because my mom used to bring that up to the day she died, how long it took the cops to get here. Here comes the cop. Now, back then, every cop on the Center Township Police Force moonlighted as a police officer. Usually they were steel workers or they worked a couple miles down the road, what we call Power Alley. Uh, some uh, electrical type manufacturing plant was down there. So none of them were full-time. They were all part-time. They were all sleepy by the time they got to their police officer job. So the officer asked my mother what happened. My mother shaking, screaming, crying, yelling at the cop, telling him what happened. The cop says, well, I'll go up and talk to her. Nowadays, you would have SWAT teams, 10 Army regiments, 10 divisions of Marines, two nuclear aircraft carriers on the road, right? You're getting my point. One cop, one beat up cop car. He leaves his car in the driveway, walks three houses up. He's up there. You can see the lady. We're all watching out the front porch. It's winter. It's cold. We're watching the lady doing this with her hands. You know, you can see her cigarette glowing, right? Cop comes back. Well, he tells my mother, you know, you need to tie your dog up and not let it poop in people's yards. My mother, is like the dog got loose you could see there's a chain right here she's holding the chain that's hooked up to the wrought iron railing on the porch showing the cop he says well he said i could cite you for letting for letting the dog poop in her yard dudes and dudettes not a thing, not a thing happened to the lady up the street. Not a thing, not a thing. She's on our porch pointing a handgun at my mother. My dad didn't know till he got home at 12.30, quarter to one that night. No cell phones, you can't call the mill. Okay, those people have never worked in a steel mill. It's not like you're an insurance salesman or you're the appliance salesman at Sears and you could actually call and get a hold of them. Oh no. Number one, if you could get a hold of them, you wouldn't be able to hear him and he wouldn't be able to hear you because of the sheer noise of the steel mill. So Colin was out. We didn't even know when my dad would work overtime. He just wouldn't come home. We just assumed he'd be working overtime. Oh, I'm digressing now. So, where was I at? Oh, so nothing happened to this nutcase, right? From that day on, my mom hated anything to do with firearms. Anything. And rightfully so, because that traumatized her. As you know, I own several firearms. Uh, pro proponent of the Second Amendment. 
but my mom hated anything to do with firearms after that day. So, now the dad gets home the net, that night. He, my dad now, he wants to go up and beat up the guys, the lady's husband. But my mother talked him out of it because the husband wasn't home either. Apparently he was working. So it really had nothing to do with the nut, the nut case crazy woman husband so just thought I'd share that story with you <laughs> any questions about that story feel free to ask in the comments well have a great Memorial Day weekend uh, I'm catching some overtime tomorrow and uh that's all I got right now. Take care of yourselves.